Hello, my name is Jeff Hunt, I'm a Chartered Building Surveyor, and today I'm going to give you a very brief introduction to this. The standard industry damp meter. So this is a protometer damp meter, and I'm just going to quickly demonstrate to you how to interpret the readings off this. Now this is uh, a presentation for surveyors, but it could also be for you if you're trying to sort out some damp in your own house and you're thinking of buying one of these. So they all work on pretty much the same principle. Now the thing to work out really is how it works because it doesn't actually measure damp. What it does is it measures the resistance of electricity between these two prongs. Can you see those there? So for example, um, if I were to put a screw between these two, it goes off and you can see that the instrument gives you a light reading. So the less resistance, the more that goes to red. And it also gives some numerical numbers as well. Now that doesn't mean that this screw is wet, but the way to interpret this is something that has moisture in it gives a different reading on this meter, depending on how much moisture there is. So for example, my finger is fairly moist. That sets the meter off. However, I cannot draw the conclusion that I've got rising damp in my finger. And that's where it all goes wrong. So it's very important to work out how to use this particular instrument. Another important point to, to realize is that actually it was made for measuring moisture in wood. So you were to put the meter in there just to work out how much water there is in the wood itself, because we have to have seasoned wood. So that's what it was originally made for. So if you go and stick this in other materials, it's not quite the same reading. But as you'll see, what this is all about is comparative readings. And this is the first real lesson. So let's go over to my demonstration wall here. So let's say that I'm starting out with this. And one of the first important things to do is to do your first initial datum reading. So go somewhere where you know that it's gonna be dry on the house, maybe on the first floor, <laughs> really inside the house and with a bit of timber, uh, like a piece of skirting board or door frame, just check out whether there's a big, big problem in the house because there's lots of other reasons why this could go off. Now you could also push this into the uh, plaster of the wall, again, just to check what the reading is. And on this particular demonstration, that reads green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just compare everything to that reading. So anything that's higher is gonna be a little bit more wet. Anything where it goes ballistic, it's gonna be even wetter, okay? So I'm not interested in actual figures, okay? So if I'm walking across my room, I can put the pins in and it's green and it's green and then I come across and suddenly I get a warning sound. So the meter's gone to red, I carry on across, it's still going and across. So the next thing to do is then go up to see how far up it goes. It's still reading red, red, kind of gone to green there definitely green there and green up there. So then coming back down the wall again, yes, I've got a red reading in that zone. It's red there, it's gone a bit ambery, and then it's gone green. So from that, I can work out where the zone is. So also on my demonstration, I've also got a very wet source of water. So let's go and see what that does. And that's the highest reading okay so all i've got really there is an idea that i've focused in on some of these areas so what we need to look at is we need to look at the pattern so we've got a red zone here with a very very high reading down here we then start to go into an amber zone and i've drawn this little line in here where that might go to amber and then above that we've got a green zone and really, it's the combination of the pattern of these readings which give you a demonstration of where the moisture is. So on this wall, we can clearly see that it's in this bottom corner here. It's not over here, it's not up here, okay? So we can use these patterns to work out the most likely cause of the damp penetration problems. We also need to add in what the wall is made of and other visual evidence before we can draw conclusions. One thing to remember most of all though, this does not prove that there is rising damp. We need to know much more than that. So I hope that's given you some idea of how to use this instrument. It is extremely useful as long as you interpret the results carefully. It's not the fault of the instrument, it's nearly always the fault of the operator, as they say. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like a look of all the other videos on my channel, then please do take a look at those. If you've got any ideas for any other content, please do contact me directly.